Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll make this bubble text that you see on the screen. This was inspired by a guy named Ristal, R-Y-S-T-A-L. He's the one that, as far as I know, originally made it. We'll start out on the edit page. As usual, go to media pool, right click, new fusion comp. You can name it if you want, but you don't have to. And leave it on five seconds. And go to Fusion. I have to use this on screen keyboard because I'm paralyzed. I can't use my hands and arms. That's why it's up there in the way. Get a background. Make it kind of an off white, but not by much though. We can go to one viewer for this. Put the background selected. Hit Emerge, Text Plus. Change the color of the text to black or something that's readable. Put the text you're liking in. Pick your font and everything now. We are going to make a macro at the end, so you'll be able to save this or reuse it. I'm going to use Arial Rounded. And I'm going to set the size to 0 0.125. My version is slightly different than his, but not by a lot, but it is different. With the text zone selected, get a rectangle, round the corners all the way up to 1. Set the height to 0 0.3, or to your liking. On the soft edge, go 0 0.006. On the border width, go minus 0 0.008. That's a good start. You may have to readjust it. I don't have a middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out like you guys do on my controller. That's why I use the drop down menu in case you're wondering. You want to have a faded edge about like that. Select the rectangle. Come back to the center. Right click on it. Modify with XY path. Then go to the modifier. Delete both these keyframes. Right click on the X. Modify with Anim Curves. Put the playout on frame zero. The offset will be the in. The scale will be the out. So take the offset back to where you're just off the screen. Then take the play it to the end. And take the mask where it's just off the screen on the right. Then highlight both of them. Right click. Copy. Click away and paste instance. If you don't know what an instance is, it's an exact copy of whatever node you've taken it off from. So if you change the value in one, it'll change it in both. We are going to de-instance a few things here. In other words, decouple them so they work independently. Select the uh, rectangle instance. Right-click on the invert and de-instance. Then go back to the original rectangle and select invert. Now all your text should be on the screen. Then go back to the instance, right click on the soft edge, and D instance. And on the border width, right click and D instance. With the original rectangle selected, double click on both of them, and we set them back to zero. And click away right about here. Shift space and displace. You want that one? You want to take the rectangle instance connected to the green input of the displays. 
which is the top, and then the instance on the text, put in the yellow, which is the bottom. And connect that into there. And then select the displays. And the refraction strength. As you'll see when you raise that, the text in the mask is getting larger. I'm going to set mine to 0 0.6 or 0 0.5, somewhere there. And you notice when you scrub that, on the edges, the farther you get left or right, the mask tends to get very faded on the edge. Select the displace node, pin it, select the instance of the rectangle, pin it, then come down here to the center, right click, expression, grab the pick whip from the plus sign, take it up to the center above and let go. And if you look at your mask now, you don't have that problem. You can unpin both these. If you look at the end here, it looks a little bit deformed, but the instance node selected. Take the border width. If you're having this issue, you may not. That was actually pretty close. The displays set the speed to one. I almost forgot that. Now we'll look back at this again. That looks good. Now we'll put a drop shadow on it. Get a background. And show space and drop shadow. Merge it into there. Right click on the original rectangle. Copy. Click away right here. And paste instance. Plug it into there. And bring it down to the mask on the merge. Select the background. Go to settings. And select apply mask invert. Now you should have this. But you see the drop shadow is on the outside of the bubble. So select the uh, instance here, right click and invert, the instance, and uncheck it. Select the drop shadow. On the drop angle, take it up to 75. That way, the angle will be coming from the top, and it's even on both sides. So somewhere around 75. And then highlight both of them. Right click, copy, click away right here. Right click and paste the instance. Merge it into there. Right click on the rectangle instance. Copy, click away right here, and paste another instance. And plug that into there. That one into the mask. And select the instance for the drop shadow. And get a transform. Then you want to hit flip vertical. Now if you look at it, it's even. So anything you adjust in this one, we'll do it in both. My default setting is going to be in the shadow strength, 0 0.25, the drop angle, 75. And we'll go ahead and make the macro. Click away, make sure nothing's selected. 
hold the control button down and select these in the order that I do. And hit A on the keyboard. Keep the control button down. Deselect the media out. Right click on any one of the other nodes. Go to macro. Create macro. Give it a name. And follow along. And a rectangle. Atom curve. The scale. Delete it and put it out. And the offset. Delete it and put it in. You may never need it, but it'll be there if you do. And displays. Just a refresh in strength. Background. And drop shadow. And go to file. Save as group. It takes you to macros. Go to fusion instead. Templates. Edit. Titles. Here is where you're going to want to make your folder. Put your preset in. Once again, don't name it exactly the same or Resolve won't recognize it. If you can't find it, you may have to restart Resolve. Here's mine. I'm not going to go over all these controls. If you want your text to be zoomed in, more or less, use the refraction strength. And you can change the background color if you want. And your drop shadow strength. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.